I've been crying on and off for the past four days. I'm not really sure what's wrong. I feel like I don't belong, and I feel a sense of general emptiness. Well, first of all, crying is not always negative. We tend to have this, this objective view of crying as something must be wrong. Sometimes tears are there as tears of joy. Sometimes tears are there as tears of truth. When I first came to India, to Rishikesh, I cried constantly. They definitely were not sad tears, but they also weren't even happy tears. It wasn't a matter of, oh, I'm so happy, I'm crying in, in joy. They were just tears of the truth. Sometimes tears are just there to, to clean our vision. So I have a very, very deep faith in the divine, in the creator, in the planner. And as long as we've been given tears, they're supposed to be there. So I know, you know, usually whenever you cry, especially, especially here, somebody's going to come up to you and they're going to go, oh, you know. Some very sweet Mataji will take her sari or her shawl and will, you know. Because it symbolizes something is wrong, but it doesn't always. And so the first aspect is don't immediately judge. You're crying. Your vision is being, being cleaned. Your windshield wipers are on. Right? They're cleaning, they're cleaning the windshield so that you can see. You know, I, I frequently say a spiritual path, it's not always fun. Seeing the truth, living in the truth, it's not always fun. Because sometimes it requires us to see things that then, if we are committed to truth, require us to live in a way that may not be the way that we've lived before. It may not be the way that's the most fun. We may find ourselves with less time for the movies, with less of an interest in hanging out, you know, mindlessly. And it may seem like we're having less fun. People may say, God, you're no fun anymore. But ultimately, what we gain is truth and clarity. And a life, a life lived only looking for fun, the problem is you have to keep replenishing it because fun has a very short half-life. You have it right now and it dissipates very, very quickly. Truth has a very, very long half-life. It doesn't even really have a half-life at all. So, so that clarity, that truth, that light which the tears very frequent, frequently are removing the obstacles to living in, to seeing. That's, that's the stuff that really our life is made of. So first of all, don't worry about the tears. But then in terms of feeling like I don't, I don't belong, how many, how many people here have ever felt like you don't belong somewhere where you were at that moment? Yeah? So pretty much all of us, and my guess is that it is all of us, um, but there's even, there's even a shyness of, of admitting that, that experience. And the reason, the reason for that is twofold. First of all, when I, again, when I identify as the body, I don't belong most places because I am so, so individual. There really are no two alike. We know this, our fingerprints, our irises, you know, whatever they're using to scan us these days, everything is different. So if I need to belong based on this body, what's happened to me, my life, what I look like, there are going to be very few places I feel like I belong because everybody is so different. And belonging is usually rooted in a sense of feeling feeling something similar. Oh, yeah, this is my tribe. These are my people. Yeah, yeah, we're similar. But if it's rooted in my, in my sense of, of body, 
And again, you'll, I don't mean just my you know, height and weight. The body, of course, includes the brain and therefore all of the patterns in my brain. It includes where I've been, what I do, what's happened to me. But if that's my marker, then I have a very, very small spectrum of places I'm going to feel like I belong. They must really be people who look like me, act like me, think like me, have had lives like I have. And that really limits us. But then here's what's interesting. When you connect deeply as the spirit, then in a way you also don't really belong anywhere either. Because there's no hole into which you fit. You know, if you think about, if we think about the world as jigsaw puzzle pieces, if I'm identifying as the shape of my piece, well, then there's only going to be a couple places I'm going to fit. But if I'm, if I'm boundless and formless and the true expansiveness of who I am, I'm consciousness, I'm love, I'm spirit, I'm energy. Well, then, yeah, I don't exactly fit right here in this little piece either. And so then we find ourselves asking questions like, well, where exactly in the ocean does the wave belong? And the answer is everywhere and nowhere simultaneously. There's no right place for the wave to be, no wrong place for the wave to be. And yet, when a wave comes up, you wouldn't say, oh yeah, you belong right exactly here. And this is, this is really the, the pendulum swing. And what we find is that as we can identify as that wave in the ocean, that we really are the ocean. You know, my favorite quote on this is Thich Nhat Hanh, who says, enlightenment is when the wave realizes it's the ocean. So when, when we realize as the wave, as the form, because just because we don't identify as the body doesn't mean that we, we ignore it. We have a body. We are a form. But it just isn't me. So yeah, if you're looking at a wave, there, there is, there is a form, but which is the higher truth, wave or ocean? If you're looking at a wave and somebody says, all right, you've got one word to describe the highest truth of what you're seeing. Is it wave or is it ocean? It's ocean, right? I mean, the wave is momentary, constantly changing. Here, gone, here, gone. Even the molecules of water, if you watch a wave carefully, it's not even the same wave for more than a split second. So the higher truth is ocean. The more eternal truth is ocean. So who we are, if we can identify as ocean, then what you realize is we belong everywhere and nowhere simultaneously. But we stop, we stop looking to fit into that jigsaw puzzle. Because you're not going to. And all of those of us who have spent any time of our life trying to fit into a jigsaw puzzle, trying to adapt, you know, the nooks and the crannies and the, the curves and the openings and the holes, in order to fit... we end up cheating ourselves and it never really works. You can squeeze yourself into a hole, but then you've squeezed yourself. So you may fit in the puzzle, but you don't fit in you. And so that doesn't solve anything either. And so the only answer is to realize how deeply you belong, not to a place in a place, but you belong as, as consciousness, as love, as spirit, the way the waves belong to the ocean, as the ocean, in the ocean. And you move through the world like that, which means as we move, we touch, we love, we bring in that metaphor, 
wetness. Whatever we're identifying as, we bring consciousness, we bring love, we bring spirit, we bring energy. We bring our capital S self. But we don't have to squeeze it into a hole. And the last part of this is we're not, we're not then dependent upon people's reaction to us for a sense of belonging. Because again, if I'm squeezing myself into your reaction, I'm going to live my life as a ping pong ball. Because I need your approval over here, your approval over here, your approval over there. You want one thing from me. You want a different thing. You want a third thing. I'm going to constantly be squeezing and expanding and squeezing and changing who I am to fit into these different, different holes. Because I need you to accept me here, you to accept me here, you to accept me here. And what I lose is myself. And at the end of the day, I don't even have any idea who I am because here I'm like this and there I'm like this and here I'm like that. And this is where belonging to yourself your capital S self, belonging to yourself, is what's most important. And really, it's the only thing that you can do anyway. Because if I adapt to you, I've lost you. If I adapt to you, I've lost you. So we belong to our, our highest, truest self, knowing that as, as consciousness, as love, as boundless, as truth, we're going to fit in the world and of the world. Not necessarily everyone's agenda. Not necessarily what everyone wants. But that's, that's part of living connected to your truth. You cannot, cannot, if you haven't learned this lesson yet, it's a really good one to take home. You cannot make everyone happy with you. You cannot fit into what everybody wants because everybody wants different things. And so if that's your goal, if that's your agenda, you're going to constantly feel less than. You're going to constantly come up short. And again, you're going to lose yourself in the process. And so what you find is when you really belong to your capital S self as your capital S self, you fit the world. Like the ocean fits the world and the waves fit the ocean and they fit the beach. And there's no sense of lack of fitting. The ocean never says, oh, there's no room for this wave over here. Never a place it doesn't fit. 